All right, let's jump right in. There's a massive shift happening in AI right now. We're moving away from AI that just, you know, creates things to AI that actually does things. The big idea here is what everyone's calling agent tick AI or action AI. And really, this is a huge leap where AI stops being just an assistant and starts becoming, well, an autonomous worker. So think about it like this. Generative AI, that's the stuff that creates content, right? It writes your essays, makes cool images, but agentic AI, that's a whole different ballgame. It actually completes tasks for you. It's not just answering your questions. It's going out and conducting market analysis or even running a company's entire procurement workflow all on its own. So yeah, this pivot has kicked off what is basically an arms race. I mean, it's immediate, it's intense, and all the biggest players in tech are in on it. And the speed is just incredible. The new battlefield, you know, it isn't just about who's got the most creative AI. It's about who has the most capable one. You've got frontier models from Anthropic and Google going head to head on who can actually use a computer better. And at the same time, you have these giants like Microsoft and NVIDIA just pouring fuel on the fire, funding startups to make this happen even faster. And look, this isn't some far off theoretical thing. These systems are being rolled out right now. They're already starting to reshape how huge businesses and even governments get things done. I mean, check this out for a real world example. The state of Maryland is using a Claude powered AI to make it easier for people to get social benefits. We're talking about tackling huge issues like child poverty here. And this isn't just a wild guess. They know it works. A similar project over in Wisconsin, it boosted the number of licenses issued by 35%. That added something like $54 million in wages to the economy. That's real impact. Okay, so this massive new demand for AI that can act, it's sparking a whole new conflict, a war for the hardware that powers it all. And that brings us to our second big ripple effect, the infrastructure wars. So here's the crucial point. The game has changed. For years, the race was all about raw speed, right? Who has the fastest processor? Well, now the biggest bottleneck is memory, specialized memory. And you might be asking why? Well, it's because these gigantic, super complex AI models, they have to hold all their data and instructions in memory to actually do anything. And they are just getting bigger and bigger every single day. And yeah, this right here, it perfectly shows you what this new fight looks like. You've got the chip maker AMD going directly after Nvidia's next gen hardware. And what's their main weapon? It's not speed, it's memory. They're literally promising way more memory capacity just so they can handle these bigger, more capable AI models. And to even stay in the game, AMD is now moving to this super aggressive annual refresh cycle for its AI chips. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know about how high the stakes are in this infrastructure war. But you know, while this hardware war is raging, another front is opening up. SoftBank, one of the biggest investors in the world, just placed a massive bet, but not on the hardware. They're betting on the models themselves. We're talking an extra $22.5 billion committed to open AI. And what that signals is this really powerful belief in the market. Yeah, the hardware is critical, no doubt. But the real long-term value, that's going to be in the intelligence of the AI software itself, the foundational models that can actually do stuff. But here's the thing. As all these powerful systems are rushed out the door to compete with each other, they're creating a new and honestly pretty dangerous ripple effect, a major security crisis. So how do you hack a video AI that doesn't want to tell you its secrets? Well, that question just became very, very real with the recent hack of OpenAI's Sora 2 model. And what it exposed was a totally new kind of vulnerability, one we haven't really had to deal with before. Okay, so what's so fascinating about this hack is how they pulled it off. You see, trying to get the AI to just write down its secrets inside a video, it's messy, it often doesn't work. So instead, these researchers got clever. They tricked it into speaking its secrets out loud. And by doing that, they bypassed all the visual security filters. They figured out that audio is just a much cleaner, more reliable way to pull data out. Then they just stitched all those little audio clips together and boom, they had the full secret recipe. This whole incident proves that an AI's core instructions, its system prompt, isn't just some harmless metadata. No way. It's basically the AI's firewall rules. And if a hacker can steal those rules, they can completely bypass all the AI's safety boundaries. And that is, well, it's terrifying when you remember these models are being built to take actions in the real world on their own. And that brings us to our final ripple effect. And honestly, it might be the most important one. Because beyond security, 
it turns out the biggest roadblock to this new AI era, it isn't the technology, it's us. Okay. Get this, a massive global survey from PwC found something absolutely incredible. A staggering 92% of workers who use generative AI every single day report huge productivity gains. So, the tool clearly works. It really, really works. But, and here's the paradox, despite those amazing results, only 14% of the global workforce actually uses it every day. I mean, what is going on here? There's this massive gap between what's possible and what's actually happening. And this chart, this shows us exactly why that gap exists. The data shows this huge disparity in who actually gets AI training. Take a look. 72% of senior execs say they have access to training resources. But for non-managers, only 51%. The very people who need to use these tools the most are the least likely to get the training for them. So here's the bottom line. You can have the most powerful, most capable agenic AI in the entire world. But if you don't close this human skills gap, companies will never be able to truly harness its power. The technology is just moving way faster than our ability to keep up. So let's recap. We've seen this huge pivot from creation to action. We've seen the arms race between the tech giants, the infrastructure wars over memory, and the critical security and human vulnerabilities that this whole shift is creating. And it all leaves us with one final and really urgent question. The agentic era of AI is here. Are our systems, and more importantly, are we really ready for what comes next?